Well, welcome back to Stocks to Watch. Today, we're privileged to be joined by Real Robotics, robots designed for human interaction with the privilege also to be joined by Andrew, the co-founder and CEO. First and foremost, welcome, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah, such a pleasure to get you on. And I really want to dive into this. I mean, you have Xbot, uh, which is a trailblazer in robotics with proven deployment in sectors like hospitality and retail. And innovation is clearly the central to your strategy. But ultimately, innovation is about solving real business problems. So what are the key challenges you're helping clients address in industries like hospitality, healthcare, retail, entertainment? Maybe break this down for us. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Sure. So we focus on two main areas, one being enterprise. And while I wouldn't say that it's a problem that we're solving, what we're really doing is, is evolving how customer service is done. Uh, in some senses, we're really taking the information that can be housed inside of a computer and adding it to sort of a human robotic form. So that, as an example, a robot has access to all types of real-time information. In the case of Tix4, who we're collaborating with, a robot is able to access information on any single show happening, hotel reservations, reviews, able to make you a restaurant, even book you a car. And those are all things that can be done in an automated fashion with an email sent to you confirming that within five minutes. On the personal side, again, I view us as using assistive technologies where robots can be used as a form of combating loneliness. Loneliness, as you may be aware, is a global epidemic it can lead to things like cancer, strokes, diabetes, and just depression. Having our robots there can be an assistive technology that can help alleviate some of these things for people who are geographically isolated. Maybe they just have social trauma. Maybe they're just not able to get, you know, for physical reasons, they're not able to get out of bed. So robots can be there as an assistive tool to help with things like loneliness, but even things like maybe helping you type an email or feed you food or dispense medication. Yeah, absolutely appreciate the insights. And I want to expand a little bit further into this. Let's talk about the physical capabilities of your robots, kind of the gesture controls, mobility, interface design, and more. How do these features kind of enhance brand image and improve customer satisfaction in the real world? And kind of talk about the business environment. Can you kind of share examples and the feedback you've received from your clients? Sure. So our robots are really meant for physical or for, for human social interaction. And so they're not, they don't have a wide range of physical capabilities, but what makes them unique is this. Number one, they're modular. We build them like Lego so they can be pulled apart, put in a suitcase and traveled with. That's unique. Nobody's doing that. We also build them in a way that you can customize the characters and the faces. So the faces and the character and the, the AI that can be used is variable. So you can change a character on the same robotic platform in under a minute. That's very unique to us. The last piece, and this is probably the one that has the most applicability to things like customer service, is the vision system that we've developed that integrates with the AI so that the robot would be able to actually recognize you or a customer, makes the identification, can then provide information. What is the service this person needs? They can, for example, you can walk into a hotel lobby, say, hi, uh, you know, I'm Andrew, here I am. The robot's like, yep, I know who you are, great. I know you have a preference for extra pillows in your room. You need a car booked for you for 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. And is there anything else I can help you with? Things like that. The other piece with the vision system that's quite useful is that it can recognize objects and situations. So think about a situation in a long-term healthcare facility, a retirement home, where the robot can actually visually see if somebody has fallen and needs help, if it need, if someone needs medical attention, it can actually snap a picture, send it to somebody and say, hey, this situation has just occurred that needs some you know, immediate attention. Can somebody please get here quickly to help? And so I think it's the combination of those things, which is the ability to customize the AI, the face, the fact that it's modular, it can be traveled with, plus the vision system that can be combined into a form of creating you know, superior customer service for companies. Yeah, absolutely. So you've kind of delved a little bit more into the, the facial side and object recognition. Maybe tell us how it's optimized specifically for customer facing roles, such as hotel greeters, retail concierge or hospital guides. And how does this differ from like mainstream conversational AI in terms of contextual intelligence and responsiveness? Yeah, so a lot there. So number one, we're just starting to unroll this. We're doing some pilot projects right now. We're doing one in the coming weeks with Tix4, which I mentioned. 
we're going to put a robot in a, in a, a mall and that robot's going to be there to do customer service and able to help people buy tickets. Tix4 is one of the largest ticket resellers in, in Las Vegas. So you wanted to go up and find out, you know, what, when is Cirque du Soleil playing? Where is it playing? What do the tickets cost? Tell me about the, you know, the different seats that are available. And it'll be able to do all that for you, plus process a ticket purchase. So the other piece that makes our robots very unique is that they're open source, meaning that we can operate our AI, which is more social companionship based, or any other AI through it. And so you're right, many companies, in fact, thousands of companies now are adopting and building their own AI. In a hospitality setting, most hotels already have chatbots built. So what this can bring to life is you can have a concierge in a hotel that will deploy the chatbot and the AI that's already been developed by that hotel company or casino, and it'll just funnel through our robots. What makes it unique is that you want the robot to seem lifelike. It's not just the mouth moving up and down, but part of our technology and what makes it really great is we're able to sort of sync what the robot is saying with facial expression. So if it's saying something funny, it can smile. It can actually recognize through the vision system if you're happy or upset and use its AI capabilities to emote in a way that corresponds to what it's seeing and hearing. Yeah, absolutely. And let's let's look ahead a little bit. This is a really quickly evolving sector between AI, robotics. There's many companies kind of getting into this space. Maybe talk about what's kind of going on here moving forward. How are you guys kind of staying ahead of the curve? Well, we continue to do R&D. So part of this is, you know, us doing these test pilot projects. The company's still early stages. So we're continuing to develop and find new ways of integrating the AI with the vision system, with the robots capabilities. The next step that we're looking to, and when we speak to our clients, nobody is saying, hey, we want robots that can do backflips and break dance. What they want is robots that have like real functionality for humans. And so the next piece of our evolution is to have robots that have hands with incredibly high dexterity so that they can actually operate a tablet, a phone, open up a pill box and dispense medication, or even feed a patient in a hospital. So that's the type of functionality that we're looking at. Again, we're not trying to make novelty robots here for, you know, to dance around that don't have much utility. What gives the robot utility is what is the knowledge that you can put in the AI and how can that be deployed for the purpose of helping humans around it? Yeah. And I mean, the total addressable market here obviously comes with some wild uh, expectations, as we've been hearing across many different companies like yours. Maybe talk about this opportunity over the next five years, what it means to you, kind of what you see for demand ahead. Yeah, well, look, this is a new market. It's, you know, we're not opening up a, a computer store or, or something that's, you know, or a bakery where you can sort of have a decent estimate of what it looks like. This is all brand new. You walk around, you look around, it's not like there's robots in households or in, in shopping malls or, or, or different places. What's happening here is, is a fundamental shift in how I think people are going to perceive jobs like customer service and certain types of labor where they can be replaced by robots. And absolutely, there's going to be a displacement of labor. That's bound to happen. But that is a positive thing. That is what happens when new technology comes in and can do things that are assistive. In some places, it's going to replace jobs that maybe, you know, weren't quite there. I'll give you an example. A robot has infinite patience, meaning you can sit it down in a hospital setting or a retirement setting, and it will sit there and have a conversation with the person for hours. Okay. You want to talk about your life, your grandkids, different things. The robot can provide an intelligent form of interaction and be patient there in a way that a nurse couldn't. A nurse doesn't have the time to sit there and do that. Again, for people who are socially isolated, it's an assistive tool that hasn't been used before to combat things like depression and loneliness. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe uh, let's, there's a lot to encapsulate here. So maybe just uh, try and do this for us. What makes XBOT a compelling investment opportunity today? Well, look, we're on the cusp of uh, a major industrial and social revolution here with robots. We are one of the only publicly traded humanoid robot companies out there. You know, Morgan Stanley believes that the humanoid robot market is going to be materially larger than the global automotive industry within 25 years. And so these are the early days. In my mind, this is a little bit like getting into the computer, you know, manufacturing space, development space, you know, in the, in the early days of Silicon Valley. So... 
you know, we're on the cusp of something big, big here. I think it's recognized by Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, everyone else. And I think we're taking a very unique approach here in that our robots are not meant to replace or do physical tasks. They're meant to help with emotional, social labor. Well, on that note, as always, we're going to pass it off to the viewers. We'd love to know what you think in that comment section. Consider subscribing as news catalysts like this comes down the wire. We're going to bring it to you here. Obviously, we're going to leave all the links uh, in the description for real botics that trades on the TSXV under XBOT, on the OTC under XBOTF, and on the FSE under uh, 76M. But on that, as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you.